help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description. The first thing that rises to protect you in the grave is your salah. And then the first thing you ask about when you're sat up in your grave is your salah. And the first thing you're going to be asked about on the day of judgment is your salah. So you want your salah to be in the best state when you meet your Lord. The Prophet said, When any one of you is engaged in prayer, you're holding an intimate conversation with your Lord. And if you pay attention to the salah, immediately after you praise Allah for His mercy, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, you affirm that He is what? Maliki Yawm al Deen, Master of the Day of Judgment. And there is no day that you're going to need His mercy more than on the Day of Judgment. The Salah is the time when you are closest to Allah. And it's the time when you're most frequent in remembering the Day of Judgment, even if it's just by the mention of it in the beginning with Surah Al-Fatiha, or in the end, when you're seeking refuge in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala from the hardships of the Resurrection. So the best Salah is the one in which your heart is most present with Allah, and you're also longing towards that meeting with Him on the last day. And as Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah said, the one who perfects their standing in this life will certainly perfect their standing in the next. There is no way that you demonstrate yourself to be a sabiq, to be a forerunner, more so than when you are diligent with praying on time. Praying on time is one of the most beloved of deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, you'll rarely find that someone is insistent on praying in the early window of salah, yet is negligent with the other deeds. And just think about how it is in dunya when you leave the gathering to go to prayer with your Lord. And now here you are on that day, you're being called from the gathering to meet your Lord like you always used to do, except now it's the time of your accountability. So the Prophet Wasallam gives us the scene. He says that after Allah sorts out the people on the day of judgment, he then calls his servants forward as individuals. And this is just one example of those servants. So think of the scene of being called forward from the crowd to be addressed directly and individually by your Lord. So he brings his servant forward and he says, O oh, so-and-so, Alam ukrimka wa usawitka wa uzawichka wa usakhira lak al khayla wal ibn. O so-and-so, didn't I honor you? Didn't I make you a leader? Didn't I give you a spouse? Didn't I put at your disposal all sorts of means of transportation. I mean, I gave you all of these blessings. Do you acknowledge them? And he would say, yes. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, didn't you think that one day you were going to have to meet me? And he would say, no. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would respond to this particular abd and say, فَإِنِّي أَنْسَاكَ كَمَا نَسِيتَنِي So I shall forget you today as you forgot me. Now, if you notice here, Allah reminded him first of his blessings upon him and then blamed him for his forgetfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the grateful one remembers Allah most because every single blessing leads that person to remembrance and worship. And this is deeply connected to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, إِنَّ أَوَّلَ مَا يُحَاسَبُ بِهِ الْعَبْدُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ عَمَلِهِ صَلَاتُهُ That the first thing that you're going to be asked about from your deeds on the Day of Judgment is your prayer. Because the Salah is connected intimately to how you remembered Allah overall and how you thanked Him for His blessings. In fact, if you pay attention to the context of Salah in the Qur'an, firstly Allah says, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ Establish the prayer for my remembrance. So this is the opposite of the one who forgot Allah. And Allah also says, So worship Allah and be amongst his grateful servants. And how would the Prophet ﷺ respond when he was asked why he prayed so much at night? He would say what? Shall I not be a grateful servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that's why in one profound narration, Prophet ﷺ said something very interesting. He said, مَنْ حَافَظَ عَلَيْهَا Whoever guards it, meaning the Salah, كَانَتْ لَهُ نُورًا وَبُرْهَانًا وَنَجَاتًا يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ That it's going to be a light for him, a proof for him, and certain salvation for that person on the Day of Judgment. My beloved brothers and sisters, the most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you praying your Salah on time. So remember to pray your Salah 
on time every day consistently and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it and salah is the first question that will be asked in your grave and on the day of judgment Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said the first question that will be asked on the day of judgment is about your salah so guard your salah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will safeguard you Allah will protect you Allah will give you jannah and every day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed five daily salah this is from fajr until isha and through this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has disciplined us and salah is the way you can come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you come closest to Allah in your sujood so every day when you pray salah you go to sujood and you ask Allah during your sujood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your du'as so if you want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then pray more and more nawafil and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do a lot of sujood and you can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Ala Verily in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find peace and salah is the remembrance of Allah when you pray salah you talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when anything used to happen to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa if he didn't feel good or if he was sad then he used to call Bilal and he used to ask him to give iqama and they used to pray together he used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my dear brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ salah ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with patience and prayer anything you need to ask Allah anything you need in your life if you are going through a lot of trials and tribulations then consistently ask Allah with patience and prayer prayer is the thing that will solve your problems prayer is the thing that will make you a better Muslim prayer is the thing that will increase your righteousness and piety and when you continuously pray your salah and when you continuously pray the nawafil you get closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah loves you when Allah loves someone Allah calls Jibreel and says about your love to him then he says it to the angels and then the angels spread the news to the world and then people in the world starts loving you so if you want the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then pray your salah pray regularly and see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives miracle in your life how Allah changes your life for better when you will pray your five daily salah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you peace Allah will open the doors of sustenance for you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of opportunities for you so don't miss your salah say your work that you you have salah but never say your salah that you have work and even if by mistake if you miss your salah then pray it as soon as you know about it as soon as you see that the time is already there for prayer help us build an islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description